you know, we have some of the healthiest reefs on the planet uh, in the Red Sea, particularly in these remoter parts of Saudi Arabia. You've probably got more diversity in the reefs within 10 kilometers of this ship in Saudi Arabia than you have throughout the entire Caribbean. I mean, it's just super diverse. We're here on the Ocean Explorer in the Northern Red Sea. It's an area which has been little visited by science. And we have a world-class team composed of geologists, oceanographers, marine biologists, ecologists, fishery scientists. And we aim to look at every facet of this incredible area. And a particular focus has been the corals uh, here in the Northern Red Sea are particularly resilient to change. There's a lot of temperature stress in the area. But the reefs here are better than many that we find elsewhere in the world. We seek to uncover why they have this inbuilt resilience, what makes them so healthy. Healthy coral reef communities support the ocean and the health of the world in many ways. For the ocean, perhaps a quarter of marine species spend part of their life on the coral reef. From this mission in the Red Sea, we can learn a lot of things about saving coral reefs. It will help us get closer to the 30 by 30 goals and to the goals of you know, conservation in the next decades because of the, the new learning that we'll get from the science. And we can look at the ecology of these systems, see which areas are doing best, and then uncover the reasons for their success. And then we can take those learnings and apply them broadly throughout the world uh, when we start to think about marine protected areas. The first reef building corals appear about 400 million years ago, and they survive all of these incredible mass extinctions. We lose the dinosaurs and all sorts of other organisms, but the reefs survive. But the paradox is they're incredibly sensitive now and we're losing them. And we call this the coral reef crisis. And if we carry on at this rate within the next decades, they're gonna be completely gone and that's no exaggeration. If you can leave the reefs alone, they still die with hot summers, but they recover much quicker. They have this built-in resilience. And if we can give reefs space, I think there's a, a meaningful chance that they will live and fight on. But you just can't add that direct human pressure on top of the global pressures of climate change. And there's a hope that by coming here to Saudi Arabia, that it provides a scientific backing for the aspirations of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to become a leader in marine conservation. There are, you know, hundreds of millions of people around the world who are very dependent on reefs, and that needs to continue because they don't have much else. It means businesses such as the tourism industry and shipping and other sectors really working out how they can benefit from the reef systems without harming them. And because they are the principal beneficiaries, they really need to invest in the solutions. And a lot of that protection needs to happen in, in working seascapes where people are you know, using the sea and dependent on it in developing countries in particular. And the leaders need to support that process in the hundred other countries that have coral reefs in their, in their waters as well and to help and work with them to achieve that. Reefs really emphasize you know, what we're doing to the planet. They're the first major ecosystem to collapse. We have to set really large portions of the ocean aside as protected areas and where they're really protected areas where you know there's very little human influence then I have some hope but we've got to do it quickly because that window for change is closing very quickly